गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम अगेन टू दिस सेशन ऑन द लिम्स रिविजन फॉर अवर एस एम जी स्टूडेंट्स टूडे गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लिम्स वी विल डिस्कस फ्यू एम सी क्यूज फ्रॉम द लिम्स पार्ट मेनली दिस रिविजन इज अ रिविजन क्लास एंड वी नो द एग्जाम्स कमी नियर बाय आफ्टर फ्यू डेज ऑनली फॉर द एफ एम जी पार्ट माई नेम इज डॉक्टर अंकित खंडेलवाल एंड आई एम एन ऑटोम एजुकेटर इन अवर एन अकेडमी प्लेटफॉर्म आई एम एम बी बी एस इन एम एस लेट एस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्यू details about the an academy then he proceed further you should know the benefits of plus subscription there is a youtube class there are special classes and there then there are plus courses very importantly they have the daily live classes the structured courses are there live test and unlimited access obviously when the structured courses means that all the 19 subjects they are uh, they are planned in such a way that you get the best of everything and in a correct sequence and obviously get unlimited access and there is also one more thing when you have got a known as iconic subscription where the an academy has joined hands with prep ladder so you get the live classes over here with the recorded sessions over here so you get best of everything what is your mood like what is your temperament like you can go with the live or with the recorded for this iconic there is uh, some offers going on for this time period zones the new slash of prices price have been reduced so there is limited time period offer so let's make use of it then as we were talking about the plus courses for example from uh, tomorrow we're going to start a neat pg batch so most welcome from tomorrow only 16th of june we're going to start a neat pg batch that is important then also we are going to start a next 2022 batch from tomorrow only for the next exams apart from all this an academy is also planned due to this pandemic and all the profession here the prof courses prof 1 2 3 4 all the courses have been launched all the courses have all the year wise courses have already been launched okay so for that also welcome very much and have a make full use of it now very importantly if you buy subscription for 3 months you get one month extra so it is 3 plus 1 over here and there is 12 months if you buy you get two extra months so 12 plus 2 and 3 plus 1 so there is additional benefit which you can get right now when you open the app or in the laptop desktop doing check out you get all these options so there are various options it is not that you have to purchase it for one year or two year or minimum that much time or the if you are thinking to enroll only for the academy that, that is a plus you can go from 3 months to 36 months and if you are uh, opting for the iconic that is an academy plus prep ladder you can grow from one year one and a half to to three year all the various subscriptions okay so i guess that is fine guys let us return back over here the topic is our limbs part limbs part let us now start the mcqs let us now quickly start the mcqs that was just a briefing around the whole uh, setup and we'll first do the few of the upper limb mcqs then we'll go to the low limb mcqs here it goes the first one 45 year old lady is being examined as a candidate for cosmetic breast surgery common nowadays the surgeon notes that both of her breasts sag considerably both of her breasts they sag considerably that is why she may be thinking of having a cosmetic surgery which structure has most likely become stretched to result in this condition is it the scarpa's fascia the p major the p minor the suspensory or the serratus anterior muscle these are your five options 45 year old lady her both of her breasts are sagging considerably which structure do you think has been stretched and with the answer okay very good quite fast to respond guys very good yep the answer over here is option number d that is suspensory ligament as the name suggests saying it is suspensory ligament the suspending so suspensory these are the scarpa's fascia actually is a part from the abdominal wall the p major p minor these are forming you can say the mammary bed these are the muscles of the upper limb upper limb which are attached to the thoracic cage and also coming from thoracic cage but these are muscles of the upper limb now they form the mammary bed the breast anatomically lies in the superficial fascia please forever if there is any doubt still please remove it the breast of the mammary gland is a structure is a organ in the super 
facial fascia. The muscles are lie deep to it. These both muscles they lie deep to it. If you, if you have involvement of these muscles, you know this. When you study the staging of the breast carcinoma, there is a stage 4 fixity of the chest wall. Remember that. Now, the serratus anterior muscle again is a muscle of the anterior, uh, the upper limb attached to the thoracic cage. Let us see the breast in a picture over here and let us see a few things over here. You can see the sagittal section of the breast over here. That's the anterior part. You can see the nipple and the areola surrounding it. Nipple and the areola surrounding it. And you have all of this breast tissue. I told you all of this, all of this is lying in the superficial fascia. Clear? Behind this what you see, P major and behind this you have the P minor muscle. P major, when deep to it you have a small muscle P minor. And what are all these, all these, if you can see it, let me zoom it slightly over here. Let me zoom it slightly over here. Okay, can you see these lines? They're going from the skin behind up till the memory bed. These are the suspensory ligaments. See one more over here. See one more over here. See one more over here. Suspens suspensory ligaments. Obviously, this lady must have given multiple births, two, three births, whatever. And with the age, with the age, there's more of fat accumulation, the breast may sag. And cosmetically, she is going for the breast enhancement surgery. And these ligaments are stretched. Now, that is another, that is a cosmetic thing. But, but what is the clinical applied? What is the clinical applied? The clinical applied of the suspensory ligament is, if you have, if the lady has a growth over here, that could be even a benign growth or a malignant that we are not sure, but there's a growth. And if this growth, if this growth, it impinges on the suspensory ligaments as dot ligament okay what occurs this dimpling of skin this dimpling of the skin the skin gets gets stretched over here so if you see from the surface if you see from the surface there is a dimpling of the skin that feature if you are seeing uh if on on inspection only if you are seeing a memory gland you're seeing a dimpling on the skin it denotes, you have to ask the history if this is of recent or is it a congenital anomaly, whatever it is. Normally it is of recent. Then this implies that the growth has involved the suspensory ligament. Now, don't, doesn't mean that it is malignant, it could be benign also, but yeah. That is a clinical applied part. Okay. So, I hope you got the point guys. This question, the answer was our suspensory ligaments. Okay, let's see another one. Okay, here you go. While walking to his classroom building, a first year medical student slipped on the wet pavement and fell against the curb, injuring his right arm. Radiography images shows a mid-shaft fracture of the humerus, which pair of structures are injured at the fracture site. Okay. Two important points which I have highlighted in the question. Mid-shaft fracture, which pair of structures? They already are saying which two structures are there in the mid-shaft mid of the humerus fracture of humerus. Yes, guys, answer. Okay, options if you want me to speak them out. Median nerve, brachial artery, axillary nerve, posterior, humeral circumflex or circumflex humeral, radial nerve and deep brachial, suprasaplo, nerve and artery, long thoracic nerve and lateral thoracic artery. Okay. Okay, jumping to CC. What is CC? Okay, let us, let me underline the C part and move to this side. Radial nerve and deep brachial artery. Very good. That is the answer. What? If I ask you, they lie anteriorly in the mid-shaft or posterior in the mid-shaft? Just a simple question. They're just moving one step forward because questions have already been asked. One step forward. These structures, they are anterior to the mid-shaft or they are lying posterior to the mid-shaft. Obviously, they are not inside the bone. They are either anterior or posteriorly. Both of these structures, they are lying posterior to the mid-shaft. In the spiral groove or the radial groove. You have the spiral groove or the radial groove. Spiral or the radial group. Okay? Okay. Radial nerve, we all know. What the radial nerve? One of the, this is the largest branch of brachial plexus. Has all the root value of the brachial plexus. It has from C5 to T1. That is our radial nerve. The largest branch of brachial plexus. Very important nerve. Applied also. Deep brachial artery is a branch of brachial or axillary artery. It's a branch of, remember, it's a branch of brachial artery. And another name, another name of the deep brachial artery is profunda. Profunda actually guys means deep. Whenever in anatomy you hear the word profundus, it means a deeper structure. Plexor digitorum profundus. 
okay then you have the profunda femoral artery that is also known as deep femoral artery profunda brachia is known as your deep brachial artery so it is also known as profunda remember the one word over here profunda means deep wherever you get this in the question remember it is going to help you these are the structures two structures okay let us see this is a whole humerus the anterior aspect of the humerus the posterior aspect of the humerus and here if you see that is showing the anterior but can you see these dots over here these dots these dots represent that they are lying posterior the radial nerve along with it the brachial artery actually guys will come forward okay cubital fossa but its branch over here which is given off that is a profunda brachii or the deep brachial artery one extra point if i may give over here it the deep brachial artery i will write in just dba deep brachial artery gives off two branches main branches apart from the nutrient artery and the muscular branches the other two name namely named branches are radial collateral and middle collateral and middle collateral artery radial collateral and middle collateral these are two branches of deep brachial just an extra information they are important for the for your anastomosis around the elbow remember that okay so let's move to the next question over here okay here it goes question says 18 year old male is brought to the emergency after an injury while playing the rugby okay fine Imaging reveals a transverse fracture of the humerus one inch proximal to the epicondyle. There is a transverse fracture one inch proximal to the epicondyle. What nerve is most frequently injured by the jagged edges of the broken bone at this location? Okay. One inch proximal to the epicondyle, there is a transverse fracture. Guys, remember in the upper and lower limbs, these are appendages. Normally, the questions they will come from the accident or the injury part. Bone injury, nerve injury, vascular injury, all these questions. Okay. The options are axillary, median, musculocutaneous, radial, and ulnar. Yes, guys. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a supracondylar fracture. Most commonly injured nerve is actually your median or its branch that is the anterior interosseous nerve. Then you have the median nerve. Then you have the radial and the ulnar. Lastly, the ulnar. Now, these are the, this is a sequence actually. Radial and ulnar. This is a sequence. Anterior interosseous is actually a branch of median nerve. It's actually a branch of these two are separate. Now the point is why. As you've seen in the previous question, guys, and you see this the same humerus. This is a brachial artery. This brachial artery and ulnar nerve is lying where behind, posterior to the medial epicondyle. This is the ulnar nerve. The radial nerve it comes forward laterally laterally now what there is one more nerve if i may take this different color over here for the nerve there is one more nerve which is on this aspect which nerve is that on medial to the brachial artery around the cubital fossa this nerve is your med median nerve median nerve brachial artery then then you have the what let me show you this color i hope you will recognize this Okay. Okay. Here you have the biceps tendon. There is MBBR. Median nerve, brachial artery, biceps tendon, and your radial nerve. So there is a these are the epicondyles. There is one inch above there is a transverse fracture. Obviously, this median nerve, the main trunk over here, gets between the jagged edges because radial nerve is still turning from posterior to anterior. So, median nerve or its branch, which is the anterior interosseous, that may get damaged over here. Then comes the option of radial nerve, and finally, you have the ulnar nerve, which is going behind. So, this is how this is how you have these as the in the question. Out of these options, the median nerve was the actual answer. I hope the point is clear. Okay, supracondylar fractures. Let me show you an x ray showing you the supracondylar fractures. Here it is. Here it is. Supracondylar fracture over here. Oh. Okay. You can see that is the forearm bones. This is the ulna, that is the radius over here, and this is the humerus. You can see its epicondyles are over here, and the proximal part of the humerus, there is a fracture at the star side. The proximal part is moving anteriorly. Imagine the nerve and the vessel over there that can be damaged. That can be easily damaged. Common fracture in the small children, the toddlers, the school going children, fractures. Okay. 
Okay, let us move to the next question and try to answer this. Okay. 22 year old lady is admitted to the emergency in unconscious state. The nurse takes a radial pulse to determine the heart rate. This pulse is lateral to which tendon? Lateral to which tendon? This pulse is lateral to which tendon? Which pulse? Radial pulse. Basically, radial artery is lateral to which tendon? Palmaris longus, FPL, FDP, FCR or FDS. Try to answer over here guys. Let me see your responses. Hmm, very good. Remember over here one thing. At the point of the wrist, when you palpate the radial artery or deeply slightly difficult ulnar artery. Remember a mnemonic that is ALT. Artery is lateral to tendon at the area of wrist. Artery is over here referred to the radial artery and the other one is the ulnar artery. And their respective tendons are FCR and FCU. So both of the arteries are lateral to respective tendons. Where? At the wrist anteriorly. Okay. Now if I ask you, okay, if I this is the FCR lateral to it, you have the radial artery, obviously that is the answer. But between the FCU and the ulnar artery, there is one more structure. Which structure is that? That was asked couple of years back in your INICT exam also. Couple of years back, so it can come in FMG other exams also. There is a structure between the tendon of flexor carpal laris and the ulnar artery. Which structure is that? Anyone, anyone, think, 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 think. Still thinking? Okay, let me show you the image over here. Okay. Meanwhile, you answer, don't worry. Look at the image also. That is a lateral side and tape out of the wrist that is the medial side why is it lateral you can see the thinar eminence okay finds so this is the hypothenar okay see the radial artery this is the radial artery it is lateral to this tendon should be fcr now see the fcu that is the fcu over here flexor carpal naris lateral to it you have the ulnar artery but i ask you which structure is between them this was the ulnar nerve and these both ulnar nerve and artery can you see they are passing superficial to the flexor retinaculum median nerve over on the other hand is passing deep to the retinaculum you know the cts the carpal tunnel syndrome no need to tell it again you know it very well and radial artery is going posteriorly onto the asb anatomical snuff box okay so artery is related to tendon remember that part and on the medial side you have a nerve you have a nerve which is lying very good so well, I can see your response is this line between the artery and the FC. Okay. Okay. Now let us see some lower limb questions also. Important questions. A young man suffers a dislocation of the right hip in a car accident. So there is a right hip dislocation. Fine. During the recovery, he finds he has an abnormal gait in which he in which his left hip sinks when he lifts that foot to take a step as shown in the right frame C. Okay, see the right frame C. When he tries to take the left step, the left hip goes down. That is a problem over here. The problem is the result of damage to which of the following structures. That is the issue. He had a dislocation of the right hip. What do you think is the issue over here? Four or five options are over here. Four options only. The problem is the right gluteus maximus or the left gluteus maximus, the right gluteus medius or the right gluteus minimus and their respective nerves. What is the issue over here? Trendel and Buck sign. If you are some of you are still wondering what is this over here? Okay, we have different different answers. A going with A and C. Okay. Hmm. He has a dislocation. He had he had a dislocation of the right hip. This is Trendel and Buck sign. Now, guys, there are few muscles over here on the sides. There are few muscles which are known as gluteus medius and minimus. Both gluteus medius and gluteus minimus i'm just writing g over here okay these are ab ductors these are what these are ab ductors at the hip now try to understand if both the foot are on the ground if this muscle gluteus medius or minimus contracts foot is on the ground obviously it is not abducting it will remain like that but if you take the left foot off the ground if you take the left foot off the ground which side gluteus medius will contract? If you take the left foot off the ground, 
the if you take the left foot off the ground the right side gluteus medius that will contract why now try to understand what happens to the right side gluteus medius listen for a few seconds when you take the left foot off the ground the right gluteus medius contracts why because it will do its function that is abduction okay but sir left right foot is on the ground what is the abduction over here good point right foot is on the ground when this muscle will contract it is not pulling the right lower limb what it will do it will contract so it will pull the pelvis in this direction yes or no so pelvis which was like this it will be now tilted like this so the left side pelvis will rise so that it helps in us in walking and running this foot can be taken off the ground that is normal but in case of right hip dislocation these nerve the supply of gluteus medius that is a superior gluteal nerve would have been injured now the right gluteus medius minimus is not acting so you, when the person takes the left foot off the ground this muscle is not contracting and it will not be able to pull this up and with the weight of the left side of the body the left pelvis will go down that is a tendon sign it is a problem in the ab ductus that is either the medius or the minimus but you should know it's nerve supply the medius minimus are supplied a superior gluteal nerve not the inferior not the inferior gluteal nerve hence the answer is option number c for calcutta why right sided remember he had a dislocation in the right hip and his left hip is sinking down the problem is not in the left muscles the problem is not in the left muscles problem are in the right muscles please understand this point is very very carefully this question normally comes every next year every next year means every alternate year minimum one question comes okay i have point is clear let me then show you the muscles also individual muscles that is minimus gluteus minimus this is the posterior aspect sir why posterior can't you see the greater sciatic notch lesser sciatic notch and the ischial spine posteriorly this is the anterior part that is the anterior part okay so this is your whole iliac crest you are looking at a lateral view see this gluteus minimus muscle arising from the outer part of the hip bone that is a gluteal surface inserting into the greater trochanter the lateral part of greater trochanter so when it contracts as you look on the lateral side it will abduct it will abduct suppose this is the right lower limb it will go like this abduct same issue is with the medius again the same figure posterior anterior slightly bigger muscle it is covering the minimus behind deep to it again going where into the greater trochanter when this muscle will con contract means the fibers will shorten this hand imagine the hand is my right lower limb muscle contracts okay right lower limb is abducted you are looking at a lateral view if the right foot is on the ground it will tilt the other pelvis the opposite side pelvis superiorly that is a gluteus maximus or this is located posteriorly this is a posterior view guys and this muscle therefore when it contracts when its fibers will come close okay the lower limb will be pulled posteriorly that is the extension so it is a chief extensor of the hip joint it is a chief extensor of the hip joint you combine them look at the cadaveric image most superficial are the, your gluteus maximus over here and deep to it you will have these muscles on the lateral side the muscles which you see are medius covering minimus simple as that the key muscle over here will be this that is your piriformis and here you have the combination of the three muscles the two gemelli superior and inferior gemelli between them you have the tendon of oi it is times of india okay tendon of obturator internus and below this you have this not a uh, four piece muscle but it is quadratus quadrilateral shape muscle quadratus femoris it is different from quadriceps femoris which is the anterior thigh muscle quadriceps femoris is a combination of four muscles that is quadratus femoris okay okay fine let us see one more question okay this was your uh, sacral plexus just to show you where the gluteal nerves are coming out superior inferior gluteal nerves sometimes they may ask they owe you its root value superior is l4 5 s1 inferior is one level below l5 s1 s2 just remember that okay this is a lumbosacral plexus ls plexus nerves coming out including the spinal termination of the sciatic nerve and you have the pudendal nerve over here this their nerve supply also come the root value the pudendal nerve is frequently asked fine okay let us see one more question hmm very simple straightforward and very nice question that all of the following structures they pass through the greater sciatic foramen 
sorry <laughs> greater sciatic foramen except which does not pass through the greater sciatic foramen superior gluteal artery sciatic nerve obturator internus tendon and the pudendal nerve we have just seen all of these structures what do you think is the answer which does not pass through the greater sciatic foramen let me see your responses okay very good jumping to the answers good what is option number c and c most of you that is a favorite option of you guys operator internal tendon sure yeah very good it is operator internus tendon which does not pass through the greater sciatic foramen which does not does not pass through the greater sciatic foramen how let me show you the bone over here this is a hip bone on the left hip bone you are looking at a lateral side lateral side means outside that is a, all these are the gluteal surfaces from where you have seen the gluteal muscles here is where the head of femur will come fine but this is your point this is your greater sciatic notch over here this, this is a greater sciatic notch it still is fine and lesser sciatic notch okay now let us see another image of the same bone on the inner side left hip bone looking on the medial aspect you have to understand this is the left hip bone on the medial aspect posterior part is this anterior part is this now try to understand few things over here here you have the sacrum there's a whole vertebrae are coming down over here sacrum will come down like this and somehow it will be located over here so there are structures which are going from the pelvis to the gluteal region in this direction via greater sciatic foramen you can see over here and they will come on this side they'll come on this side okay now again look here you have the obturator foramen it is covered by the obturator membrane and there you have a huge muscle that is the obturator internus this whole muscle over here will be obturator internus its tendon will come out it will come out from here it will take a turn from the lesser sciatic notch so obturator internus tendon will take a bend from where from the lesser sciatic notch over here and remember here you had the head of femur this was the neck the trochanters and the femur was going down this obturator internus then goes and attaches in the trochanteric fossa region so it will take a bend from here so remember the tendon of obturator internus is not coming from the greater it is coming from the lesser sciatic notch and other structures over here which you can see the let me write the greater sciatic foramen what are the structures passing through it just last point over here main you have the one thing the thickest nerve that is the sciatic nerve superior to it you have the superior gluteal vessels and a nerve inferior to it you have the inferior gluteal vessels and a nerve clear clear sciatic nerve you have and you have the other nerves now what is the key muscle the key muscle over here i should have written in between over here i'm writing it now is a piriformis muscle is a piriformis muscle so that is a key muscle this is the key muscle of this whole gluteal foramen you can say above piriformis you have the superior gluteal and below piriformis you have the inferior gluteal and the sciatic nerve so sciatic nerve is where it is below the piriformis other nerves are over there which are your posterior femoral cutaneous nerve okay then you have the pin structures p i n n pin are your pudendal nerve internal pudendal vessels and this is nerve to obturator internus it is not the obturator internus tendon it is a nerve to obturator internus okay so you have these structures and you have one or two other small structures but these are the mains which are passed through the greater sciatic foramen out of these these uh, two mainly these two they will enter into the lesser sciatic foramen also along with times of india <laughs> tendon of obturator internus so these two pudendal nerve and the internal pudendal vessels which are basically going to supply the perineal region will enter back to the perineum will enter back to the perineum so am i out of these options it is your uh, obturator internus tendon that passes that doesn't pass through the greater sciatic foramen while others do pass okay okay fine guys so these are few mcqs which we discussed and uh, just give me a few minutes we'll start with a special class so we have now a special class you can join that again that is for the fmg part we'll discuss around 15 20 mcqs as much as we can in the coming 40 to 50 minutes okay and after that at the night around 9 pm today we are maybe discussing some embryo histo mcqs so all the rest for that also so i hope you enjoyed the session and don't forget this code over here which i forgot to tell you dr ankit hyphen yt as remember all these are the advantage of the plus courses you should think it right now if you are seriously thinking for preparation 
if you're an MBBS, even then it is fine. If you're preparing for NEET, then it is fine. You have these uh, additional benefits. Three months, one month extra, 12 months, two months extra, all these are benefits. So I hope you enjoyed this, you enjoyed the session. Any other issues, you can contact me at the Telegram groups. We'll try to help you out over there. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed and let us meet in the special class. Thank you very much.